I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Nine, no, <laughs> no, no! Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day. All right, you guys, I, I don't know what it is about like me just having the, the, the desire to open up, you know, very sketchy, um, <laughs> like weird boxes, but like, I just, I can't help it. The fact that this box went bankrupt and then some other company bought it out and then like re-released it, but they're still being kind of sketchy about it. Like it just is enticing. Speaking of that, I heard that there's some weird stuff going on with Birchbox. The same company that bought out this box is buying out Birchbox. And that is also enticing and something that I kind of want to look into. So if you guys would like kind of an investigative video about like, maybe the company who's buying out all these subscription boxes and the reason behind it, let me know. But today we're gonna to be getting into the All True box for um, a summer, I'm assuming, I don't really know. I'm guessing it is for summer. And if you guys don't know what I was ranting about in the beginning, I have a whole video on what happened with All True and them going bankrupt. And then we did another unboxing of them uh, a little while ago. I have just been hearing, I have just still been hearing some not great things about this box. Let's go ahead and get on into it and see what we got. Oh, spring, okay, so spring 2023. This little magazine here should tell us all about the items inside of the box. Uh, but I won't look at this until the end, but let's go ahead and get on into the first item here that caught my attention, which is this like pot. This looks like camping. All right, so the first item we have here is from a Small Hours. Just say stainless steel food container. A small hours. A little wonder. Twisted kind This is a 33 ounce leak proof stainless steel food container. It's supposed to be sustainable. I actually really like the idea of a stainless food container. I've never had like a to go container or like a Tupperware that wasn't, you know, like Tupperware material, like plastic. Oh, it's dishwasher safe. That's very important not for microwave use <laughs> uh, yeah probably yeah i hope nobody would try to put this in the microwave you never know though and the little outer packaging here is made out of 100 recycled materials so that's nice this does seem like a nice item so there are two little like clampy claw arms <laughs> And then you have the lid here. It looks a little like, you know, like dog food bowly, but I, I really do like the idea of this. I feel like it wouldn't get as like stained as like your typical plastic Tupperware. If you put spaghetti one time, any type of pasta with red sauce one time on like a plastic Tupperware, that thing is like gross after. Like you can never get that like tomato acid scent kind of out of it and it just stains that like red rim around it. Uh, but I feel like this would hold on to odors and stuff from food and uh, yeah, I kind of like this. This is easy, yeah. Now, I don't really ever leave the house very often with like a lunch in hand because I don't usually leave the house. But um, I think this definitely could come in handy. I could put like my husband's lunch in here for when he's going to the store or, you know, just some leftovers or something. Oh, more small hours. The twisted kind of thing. All right, so we have more silicone items. Silicone. Uh, no, stainless. We have more stainless steel items here. This is an on-the-go cutlery set. Again, seems very camping-esque. We got a knife, a fork, a spoon and a travel case. Let's see what these look like. I'm assuming the little like flap here is to help you open it because it's a little difficult. There we go. How cute. So they're just held in there with a little like rubbery thing and then we have, ooh, then we got like a spoon, like a soup spoon. That looks like a, you know, like if you go get like a bowl of chili or something at any type of restaurant, they give you one of these spoons and then there's a spork and then we just got like a little knife. I don't exactly know how much you'd be able to cut with this knife. It seems very, very dull. It looks like if you took a fast food like plastic knife and just made it metal. However, I think the plastic knives at the fast food restaurants might be a little bit more sharp. My mom was getting on to me once. I was at home, I was eating something. I think we had gotten like a baked potato or something from Wendy's and I was playing with one of the plastic knives and she was like, Allie, don't play with that knife, you'll cut yourself. I was like, mom, I'm not gonna cut myself, it's plastic. And I went like that and I cut my hand open on the top. Sounds like something a, a, like a teenager would do, like, oh mom, uh, but I was like 23. Are they just like packing us to go camping? Is this a travel size toothbrush? Oh, it's a face brush. Oh, okay. I mean, that picture looks e exactly, precisely like a toothbrush. I just assume, you know, they were just getting our camping gear ready for us for the spring. Oh, okay. So uh, next up in here from, what is this from? Province Apothecary. This is an ultra soft facial dry brush. And I do like dry brushing. I used to do it a lot. Um, I've never get facial dry brushed. Uh, but I did do like a lot of body dry brushing and I liked it. It's supposed to support like, you know, lymphatic drainage and uh, uh, stimulate your skin and get your blood flowing. Oh, she's shedding. Oh, you look like me, oh my goodness. <laughs> there was a lot of little like pieces of kind of plasticky brush bristles falling out of here. It's shedding quite a bit. Uh, but it does feel pretty soft. You definitely will want a very, very soft brush to be 
flying everywhere. You definitely will want a very, very soft facial brush to do dry brushing on your face. Um, body dry brushes can be kind of hard. I actually have one right now that I think is even too hard. It kind of like scrapes me up <laughs> a little bit um, every time I use it. And then I'll put like lotion or something on top of it and it does sting. It does, it, yeah, burns. So I probably need to get a replacement for that one. But definitely if you're using something like this on your face, it needs to be very soft. And this one does feel pretty soft. Oh my gosh, yeah. It says the practice of dry brushing your face activates your lymphatic system. So I was actually right about that. I wasn't 100% confident as I was saying it. But it's also supposed to smooth fine lines and illuminate appearance, reduce puffiness and dark circles, detox fresh, yeah, yeah. Tones and firm skin, that's good. Let me get under here under my, my goozler. Oh, that kind of hurts. <laughs> give it a try. Like I said, I like body dry brushing. I think it feels really nice. It's supposed to help with like cellulite and all that kind of stuff, but um, I, it just makes your skin really nice and smooth. So I'll give this a try. There's a lot of makeup on it now. All right, next we have a little shiny package. Jade roller. How many jade rollers can one person have? At least, okay, so I have like, let me, let me just reach down here. I mean, this is what we're gonna be looking at, right? But just in Jade. I feel like I have a lot of, I know I have a lot of these. I don't feel that way, I know. Oh, they do feel really good though on your, like, on your eyes and stuff. But I'm not 100% sure that I've received one in Jade uh, for quite some time. Have I received many Gua Sha's in Jade? Absolutely. Oh, it's pretty. It is pretty, I like it. Okay, this is actually really pretty. This is one of the prettier face rollers I've ever received. It has kind of this like matte kind of almost antiqued looking gold and then two jade rollers with the handle being jade as well i mean i think it's pretty this would look lovely in a kitchen i could just kind of could, can you have jade countertops that would be a lot of money wouldn't it that would be far too much oh that's cold That'd be far too much money, but I'm sure there's some rich person out there with like giant slabs of jade for countertops if it's pretty. It does feel really nice. It really does. I've received so many of these over the years. Oh, that side doesn't roll very well. And I've never fully, truly committed to like using one in my everyday life, but it does feel really good. Especially I've been getting a lot of like tension headaches around my eyes and that feels really nice. Just a little like gentle massage with the cold around my eye sockets. <laughs> Good. I mean, these look nearly identical. <laughs> I feel like these might have come from like the same place, just one just in a jade. I do, however, feel like these aren't necessarily like the highest dollar item. You probably could find these on, you know, a Timu or an AliExpress or something like that, especially if they're not truly the stones that they say or saying they are. All right, next up in here, we have this. And this is, I don't know, but it's from a lot the label and it is very white. And I feel like it's immediately gonna get dirty as soon as I take it out of this packaging. Not only is there most likely makeup on my hands, I just got done filming like a get ready with me uh, putting on makeup and stuff. But because also just last night I was trying to clean up my space a little bit and I picked up like a little palette thing and I was like, oh, what's this? And I opened it basically upside down because smart. <laughs> And it turns out it is the uh, Cav Cosmetics thing that we got in one of our Ipsies that was absolutely smashed. And it poured literally everywhere, all over the table, the floor, me. Thankfully, I had a plate to try to shovel it all into, but now everything's just kind of pink. Oh, okay. It's just, it's a little backpack. Maybe they are getting us prepared to go camping. Like this looks like fancy people camping to me. Is it already dirty? Are you kidding me? I didn't even touch that part. Did it come dirty? Like this is what you would bring camping if you never intended to actually like physically touch the dirt. But also, I don't know, there's just something about this that seems a little like unfinished to me. It looks like a like a tote or like a backpack that you purchase at <laughs> like Hobby Lobby or Michaels that has the intention of like you doing something to it. Like stamping it or painting on it or embroidering on it. It just looks a little unfinished. It does just look like a very blank, basic kind of DIY backpack tote bag that you that should be something should be done to it it definitely doesn't seem like there's any type of coating or anything on it that is going to protect it from you know any type of dirt or anything uh, I would probably if I ever were to use this probably spray it down with some of that like I want to say shellac but I don't think that's correct you know there's like the waterproofing stuff what is that called I don't know I got a can of it in the garage I <laughs> spray it down with something that would protect it a little bit because it, it, it is just very white but like the crafty side of me is like I gotta do something with this like I, I gotta put something on this like this is just begging for some type of stamp or something I, but I mean it's fine I like the hardware on the back again kind of like that antique kind of gold brass look I think that's kind of nice it just to me it doesn't seem maybe incredibly I hate to say like high quality or like super expensive looking maybe if it was made out of like a higher quality material or just something that wasn't just blank plain canvas um, it just doesn't have that kind of expensive high quality feel to it all right, and then last but not least, we have a box inside of a box down here. That's fun. Oh, 
one. Okay, this one I'm actually pretty excited about because it's made of wood and I just, I love wood things. This is a chevron wood chopping block, which sometimes kind of fun. Ooh, it's handmade from Akyasi wood sourced from Western India. It says that they work with highly skilled wood craftsmen in the villages of Uttar Pradesh, many of whom are second and third generation artisans who spend their lives surrounded by the craft. It says each simple wood product provides steady employment for these artisans and they're all handmade. So that's actually really fun. I like that a lot. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh my goodness. This, uh, this little cardboard paper net here that they got smells very interesting. Wow. Okay, when they said chopping block, I thought it was gonna be more of like, maybe like a thicker kind of butcher blocky looking thing, but it's pretty thin. Oh, it's pretty. All right, so it is just a little cutting board. It does have a nice kind of chevron-y pattern to it. When they said chevron, I was wondering if it was gonna be like stained or something in the chevron pattern, but I think I prefer that it's just the plain wood. Yeah, this doesn't smell funky. It's just their, it's their little cardboard net paper. That's, <laughs> that smells rough. But yeah, this is cute. This is honestly one of the things that I would have selected if I did have an annual membership, which I do not, because uh, based on my experience last time where anybody with an annual membership was basically just given the boot, we were basically scammed, you know, just ripped off, our money was taken and we were never sent a box. I wasn't about to go through that again. So unfortunately, because I don't have an annual membership, I don't think you get any choices whatsoever. I have to pay like upfront to get those choices, but I just don't feel secure enough, unfortunately in this company to be able to give them, you know, like a hundred plus two hundred something dollars up front. If you can go under once, you can, you, it can happen again. So unfortunately, I was not able to choose, but I did see that they had like cutting boards and things, wood cutting boards available. And I was like, dang, got it. I definitely would have picked that if I could have. So I'm glad to see that this is in this box. I will try to not put this in the dishwasher because I guarantee you will ruin it. I have some bamboo cutting boards I can't help but put in the dishwasher. They just end up in there. And uh, they have split just a little bit. So I feel like if this was introduced to a lot of water, uh, all of these little joints would just split right apart. I don't want that to happen because I do think this is pretty. It's just stamped right down there at the bottom with the logo symbol on it, and it's just very plain. But I like it, and I think it's cute, and I think it'll look nice in the kitchen. All right, so here is everything we got all together. I think, I mean, this is, it's okay. It's okay. I do have the cutting board. It's nice to have a bag. I just really wish it didn't feel like an unfinished DIY project. And there's stuff on it. I, do, I don't think I did that. There's stuff all over this. I like the little stainless steel things, but I, I'm assuming they're counting those as two separate products. I mean, it makes sense that they are, but it kind of seems like they should go together. Like that seems like a set to me. And then we just have the little face brush, which to be honest, doesn't seem like a super, super high quality product either. They're just little plastic bristles and my one was shedding quite a bit. And then again, we have the little jade roller, which I'm assuming you probably can get for fairly cheap from like some wholesale websites. I'm trying to remember now, is this like a $60 box? I feel like it has to be like around the $60 mark. So let's get in here and see how much they say these items are worth. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> okay, so the first item here, the Laud Label Convertible Backpack. I'm not quite sure how it converts. I'll have to look into that. Um, But they say it's a $98 value for a plain canvas backpack. <laughs> no! It's just plain like cotton canvas. It does say that it is ethically handmade in India from natural cotton. That's that's nice. That is very nice. It's, there's no possible way it's worth $98. There's just absolutely no possible way. I mean, the amount of material in this and it just being cotton, like this is, they have dollars in this. Maybe, maybe dollars in this. And I don't really see how it's convertible. Convertible typically means it has like, you know, two purposes, but this just seems, you know, very standardly like a drawstring backpack. There's a little pocket on the inside. Pockets on the out. This, this is not convertible. <laughs> this is just a drawstring backpack. Um, I don't know why they're saying it converts into something because even in the description of it, it doesn't say like what it would convert to because it's just, it's a backpack. It's just a backpack. Nine, no, <laughs> no, no. It's just no possible feasible way <laughs> that is worth anywhere near $98. The cutting board, which is worth $60. $65 apparently. It is artisan made out of like a fancy wood, I guess. Especially like, I hate bringing up TJ Maxx for everything, but like it's one of the only places we have to shop. And you can find handmade cutting boards, all sorts of handmade wood items at TJ Maxx. They come from like Italy, India, all sorts of places um, that also employ artisans. So uh, $65 is just a lot for a very thin, pretty small charcuterie board, cutting board, whatever you want to call it. That's just, that's a whole lot of money. These prices just seem so inflated. So inflated so that they can say that they're giving you a better value than you they are. All right, the stainless steel food container, it's 20 bucks. That seems, you know, expensive. That's expensive for one container, but reasonable. <laughs> it could be potentially reasonable. All right, and then the on-the-go cutlery set is $25. I mean, 
I guess, I guess that could be cut. But that's, it's just a spoon, fork, and knife. Just get you a normal spoon, fork, and knife and throw it in like a baggie or something. Or just dump it in your, your backpack if you're going camping. Just like chuck it in there. It doesn't need to come like a little container. You can wash it. So 25 bucks, that's, that's pretty expensive for a single little set of, you know, you know, food eating devices. And then finally, the dry brush is $18. I like how they're calling it a vegan facial dry brush. Um, I'm assuming because it's made out of plastic. I just don't know if you can call everything that's made out of plastic vegan. I mean, like that's, that would be like me being like, oh yes, this is my vegan Dr. Pepper can because there's no animal products in it. <laughs> and probably just like a buzzword, a selling point so they can charge more, like $18 for a little plastic brush. I feel like you can find these at Walmart. I feel like they have these same brushes, honestly, for your feet at Walmart, because I think I have one. And then they packaged it as a lymphatic draining system for your face, called it vegan and charged $18 for it. And then I can't find this jade roller on here anywhere. I feel like they just kind of ran out of stuff and they're like, we got all of these laying around and they just, they chucked it into the box. So um, I don't really know how much that is worth. I'm gonna just Google jade roller real fast and see what I can come up with. Lordy mercy, those are $32 at Sephora. Okay, but this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is the same one. <gasps> Look at that. Right on Timu, it's $2 for the same exact roller. You can't tell me that that is a different roller than that. This one you get a set with the gua sha for $3.23, $3.32. That's the same one. You can get an elf one for three bucks. Natural jade facial roller, $2.50 cents on Timu. I'm gonna be generous. I'm gonna be very generous <laughs> because I did see one at Sephora for like 30 something bucks, which is insane. I'm gonna go kind of in between the $2 and $32. We're gonna say 15. I feel like they probably try to claim it's worth even more. But we're gonna say 15, even though we know, you and I know that it's not worth that much. We're just going off their prices to kind of get close to what they would say that we're supposed to get in value. This daggone box is $64.95. When did it get that expensive? And they say you only get an up to $250 plus value. So this box, supposedly the one that I have, is worth $241. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 13 of that just to get back down to like the real price of the Jade Roller. 228 bucks for $65. I read that better include shipping. And I just think the prices of some of these items, especially that bag, are in crazy overinflated. $98 for just a cotton backpack? No. Now I do appreciate that they're ethically sourced and that kind of thing, but like I, I highly doubt they're paying those artisans, you know, 50%, $50 for these backpacks so they can sell them for 98. They're probably getting them for five bucks a piece and then charging in $98 for them and they're like, we're paying the fair price. I just don't know you guys it just that's it's so much money for this box $65 for a box to get like 200 and something dollars in value for things that I think are just way 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 overpriced um they're just inflating prices like crazy it's just the bag I can't get over the bag $98 for just like plain cotton bag that looks like you'd find it a Hobby Lobby wild to me that is absolutely wild to me let me know what you guys think about this box um I do love like the idea behind it I really love the idea behind it I just don't know if the numbers match up with the idea how much they're charging their customers versus how much they're saying their things are worth versus probably how much they're paying their artisans for these things. Let, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll have you guys today. So thank you so very much for watching. Please go ahead and consider subscribing if you wouldn't mind in the absolute world to me. I <laughs> hope so you guys have a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>